Okay, I'm hoping you guys can hear me. I've got my slides up here. Okay, so if you can't hear me, then you can't hear me, but hopefully you can read the screen and figure out how to get your sound hooked up. Okay, it's 4.01, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Welcome, my name is Heather. Um, I'm a support magician here at Influitus, and this is our first Advocate Hub class. Um, so what we're doing here today, we're hopefully going to be doing these every couple of weeks. We're just here to basically teach you how to use a feature of the application, um, make sure you can use it a little bit better. Um, that's the role of the support team. So, Okay. If there's any, unless there's any disagreement, I'm going to go on. Um, okay. So, quick plug at the beginning um, for the BAMIs, which are Influitive Advocate Marketing Awards. If you'd like to be nominated or you know someone who could be nominated, um, basically we're trying to recognize people who do what you guys do, which is make your product better by involving your customers in your marketing. And so. Um, you can check out Influitive.com slash BAMI to learn more about that. Okay, so Advocate Hub class. Um, one thing we've noticed is that people seem a little either unfamiliar with what the um, challenge template library is or exactly how to use it. So I'm going to just share my screen here. And I'm just going to jump into uh, – this is my personal Advocate Hub. And called – Yoga Cat, or Yoga Cat Studio, and essentially it's just a hub that I use on support. Um, basically, just to test different things out, to develop pictures for um, for some of our documentation. So sometimes when you're in the knowledge base looking at documentation, you might notice that you see different cat-related items. Um, that's me. That's what that's all about. So I've just signed in. I'm the admin. I'm just going to give a couple more minutes so everyone can get in here. Um, but you should all be pretty familiar with this screen. This is the, the challenges screen. Okay, just going to give it a couple more minutes. Hopefully you're all having a good, uh, good Wednesday. Some of you getting to the end of the day. We've got people from all different time zones here. So anyway, thank you all for joining us. Okay. Just give us a couple more minutes. And Okay. Is there anyone who can't hear me? Okay, I guess that's a silly question. Can, if you can hear me, can you just respond so I know you can hear me? Yes, I can, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, good. That's quite a few people will click here saying they can hear me. Okay, that's good. Um, so throughout the call here, if you guys have any questions, just head on to Twitter oh, and, oh, 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 oh. and just. Uh, you can tweet no, your questions at it. My, my computer is is on headset, but the but the app. Is on. I had only asked me about my microphone. <laughs> Doesn't like this. Okay, so I have web, 11 people, audio, 11 people. I can hear someone's having some trouble, maybe their headset or computer doesn't like them, but I don't know if you can hear us. I hope you can because we can hear you. So that's a good sign. Okay. 
So if you have any questions throughout this, um, you can put them in on the chat on the left side of the screen, or preferably you can go onto Twitter and tweet your question with the hashtag Influitive. Someone, is, uh, someone on our team here is sitting with me monitoring uh, those tweets. So when they come in, we'll either address them at the end, depending on the volume of questions, or we'll address them as they come in right away. So, okay, I'm going to get started here. So we're talking about the Challenge Template Library. So first step, where do you find the Challenge Template Library? We're going to go to the top of the page here and click Challenges, and we're going to click Add a Challenge. So this is the Challenge Template Library. Now when you're creating a challenge, you can either start here and pick one of these challenges by just hitting Select, um, or you can start with a blank challenge, which I think is what a lot of us do. Um, you know, you sort of have your own idea of what type of challenge you want tailored. <coughs> Maybe you don't find some of the templates in here to be particularly useful, and so instead you just go on and you make your own. Um, that's great, but what we really want to teach today is that you can um, personalize your um, challenge template library so that you can add in your own templates and you can make it really work for you. Um, one thing to look forward to is that Influtive, here at Influtive, we're going to start putting in challenge templates for you to use. So here on our team we source, um, you know, we work with people all across different hubs and we have a pretty good idea of what works and what doesn't. And um, so we're going to be putting in a few more. So you're going to see that every once in a while that some new templates have been added. Um, an example of that actually is this one right here, Download Maven, Inclusive Mobile App. And I know a few of you have put these into your hub. So when you hover over the challenge, it gives you the description on the left-hand side saying what the challenge is all about. And when you hit Select, it just opens the challenge right there. And um, everything's already pre-populated. I mean, you can edit it, you can change it to say whatever you like, but um, it's already there. You can just hit Save and it will go into your hub and then you can publish it. Of course, we have the new targeting settings that we released a few weeks ago. So you can decide what channel you want this challenge published on, and you can also decide who you want this challenge to be visible to. Um, and that's always an important thing to do whenever you're setting up challenges or uh, emails and stuff like that. Okay, so we're going to just uh, hit save and we'll go back to the challenges list. And then we, you know, you can publish it by just hitting publish. But we'll get that for now. So to the challenges page. So what I've done here today is put in a bunch of different challenges that you might use often. And what my objective is is to show you how you can add new challenges into the challenge template library, and then how you can access and use those challenges or delete them later on. So for starters, we're going to look at this Valentine's Day challenge. So this Valentine's Day challenge, you know, Valentine's Day is a holiday. There's often we suggest that you create challenges for different holidays. Maybe you're planning way in advance that in February you want a Valentine's Day challenge. So right here we can, uh, we can hit Save as a Template. You can also click into the challenge and same thing right here, Save as Template. So either way when you click Save as Template, you're going to see this screen. So you're going to, this challenge, the Valentine's Day challenge, is going to stay in your challenges list, but then it's also going to be created as a challenge template in the library. So here, let's give it a title, Valentine's Day Challenge. This is a fun challenge for advocates on Valentine's Day. Save for later. So categories, you can see the these, this is the list of the existing challenge template categories that I've already got set up. But um, if you want to create a new template, or a new, sorry, if you want to create a new category, you just simply type it in. So I'm going to call this one a seasonal challenge. Hit enter. Now that's a section in my challenge template library. But I also want to save this challenge for later. I want to remember to come back for it. So, you know, I'm not quite satisfied with it. So I'm just going to pop it into the other category I have here, which is future challenge ideas. So we know some of you do something like you'll have some good challenge ideas and you'll save your, you'll type them up in like an Excel document and keep them on your computer. We want you to know that you can also, by creating that challenge today and then saving it as a template, you can keep it here for later. Um, so that allows you to sort of keep everything in one place, um, and it makes it easy to access later when you want to put it into the hub. So let's say, you know, maybe this, today you have lots of time to go in and make a whole bunch of challenges, but you don't want to be clogging up your challenges list. 
you can create the challenge, save as a template. So that's what I'm doing here. Saving my template. It's going to take me right here. So here I am. Seasonal challenge. Valentine's Day challenge. And future challenge ideas. Valentine's Day challenge. And I can select and add that into my hub. Now I can go back to my challenges list. And I can leave this one here, or I can just delete it so that it's out of the way. And now I've got it saved somewhere that I'm going to use it later. Um, release notes, I, we think, is a good example of a challenge that you'd use often. So this clone button here, I'm sure some of you have seen the clone button before. Um, sometimes you know, maybe you're in your release notes challenge and you have to make one every few weeks. So when you need to make a new one, instead of retyping the whole thing, you go in challenges list, you find the release notes challenge, you hit clone, it makes you a copy, and then you edit it to make it relevant for the, uh, the task at hand. In this case, what you can do, instead of searching through the list, typing it in, you can just save this one as a template. Release notes. Or telling and you can pick a category. So I don't really see a category here that I like, so I'm just going to put in product marketing. Enter. Okay. Save as my template, and then it's going to direct me back here. So when you first come in it, on this page, when it really it takes you back, it's just going to show you. I guess a general page that's showing you all the challenges. No, it's just you're only going to be able to access that page with all of them after you save one. Okay, so challenges again. Let's try another one. So a new reward announcement. This is an example of one that Sherman, who runs the VIP hub, uses. So sometimes he uses makes new reward announcements. You know, um, sometimes it's the same concept every time, but the text needs to be a little bit different. So same thing again, saved as a template, new reward announcement. And maybe we'll put that one under fun, fun challenges. We'll put that there for now. Telling advocates about new rewards available. So save your template, and you go back here. So, okay. Let's say I come into the Hub one day. I know there's a release notes coming out. I'm ready to post them, but I don't want to type out the whole release notes challenge again. So I come in here. I go to Fun Challenges. I go, oh, no, I go to Product Marketing. I have my release notes challenge here. It, the description pops up. I can see right away what stages um, the challenge is in. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Okay. Just clearing up the window here for you guys. Okay. So I can see what challenges right away just off the bat looking at it. Um, you might not all recognize or know what these symbols mean right away, but these are the same symbols, and I'll show you in a second, that appear for each different challenge stage. Um, and eventually with time, just like you know, learning to type or other things like that, you just you learn the pattern and you know what means what. So it's good. Because if you're looking for a challenge that maybe is a completely different topic but has certain stages, you can quickly flip through your challenge template library and say, oh, good, there's a challenge that has those four stages included already. Good, I'll go with that. So select, release now. So this one's pretty good. Let's say you've already got my description. All as you can see, it's pretty generic. I go over to my stage. I can add in, and these are our most re recent uh, included release notes, but I could add, just quickly change the link, hit load, preview my challenge. I can see it works. Made it a little bit fun with the picture. And OK, good to go. And fix. And that's it. That's really all there is to it. Um, what you should do when you're thinking about adding a new template is really think about the types of challenges that you often put into your Advocate Hub. So um, the share a link challenge or read and share a blog post are ones that we see pretty often. Something like tweet about our regular blog post, which is this one right here. Those are all um, great challenges that you guys use on a regular basis. And if you just put them into your um, 
challenge template library, then you save yourself, you know, maybe you save yourself five minutes when you're setting up a challenge. But, um, you know, five minutes is a valuable time. We know you guys are busy people, so this is something that can kind of help you, you minimize the time that you spend like small administrative tasks for the program. Um, and that kind of it. I'll do a few more examples just so I can show you a bit more. So we'll do the read and share blog post, Davis template. Read and share a blog post, challenge asking advocates to read and share a blog post. Okay. So as a default, this one is going to include this right here. It's going to include a link already. So thing to keep in mind is that when you have a challenge template, it is it may you should definitely always check the stages. And this can have as you know as many stages as you want. There's no limit to that. Make sure you check your stages to um, to see what's there, to see if there's a link that needs to be changed, or just quickly review the copy to make sure nothing needs to be updated. Sometimes if the copy is going to be generic enough, like the release notes one, it's going to apply every time. Um, even in that case, you might want to mix it up once in a while, just maybe throw in a new headline or something, just so that the content, I mean it is fresh content because it's a new challenge and it's new release notes, but you want to make sure that it appears as fresh content in the hub to your advocates as well. So this one. Okay, read and share a blog post. So you could I will even put in one called just regular challenges or routine, regular slack or routine challenges. So you can enter, that's good. Save your template. And you can save your template as you've seen to as many categories as you want. If you wanted to save it to every single one, you could certainly do that. I don't know that I would recommend that you do that. But there's no limit to the categories that you can have. So in the same way that you can really segment out your group, you can segment out your challenge templates. And you know, if you're just starting out, you might kind of seem daunting, like maybe there aren't that many different challenges that you use over and over. But I think that as you get into the program, and maybe some of the more experienced people can attest to this, but you really become familiar with things that you do use over and over again. Um, and so that's hopefully this will be helpful to allow you to do that. Um, but yeah, the uh, notion of having your future challenge ID is something I definitely want to emphasize to you guys today, that you can just save things for later. So you can always, you know, this is my idea, I'll sort of put in a rough draft right here, and then really ready to put it into the hub, you can come, you can make your edits and um, get your challenge into the hub. Okay. so. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. So um, I'm going to head into some questions now. Hopefully you guys have been tweeting some questions. We do have a couple other questions right here. So one question that we have is how often does Influitive add in new challenges to the challenge template library? Um, we try to do this on a monthly basis. Presently we've been doing it on a bit of an ad hoc basis. So when we have particularly important ones come up, then we'll put them into the hub. Um, so for example, the advocate chat announcement in the download maven. Actually, we'll pop into this advocate chat one. So this is basically a challenge I think some of you put into your hub, basically describing how you would, um, how you're describing to your advocates how they would get in touch with other advocates. Um, so I'll just do that so you can see what it looks like. Um, similar to the way that some, some of you I know have put in challenges saying, hey, this is how you dismiss the challenges, or just sort of little mini tutorials on how to do this or how to do that. This is the same concept. It's how you get in touch with your advocates. And it's easy. You just click on their little profile picture and a little send message box will appear in the window. And you can do that to just get in touch with them and talk back to them the same way that they would talk to you guys, the administrators. So that's an, so we put those in a couple weeks ago, but right now we're developing a process to collect ideas for what the best ones are and then put them in every once hopefully once a month so that we can have some fresh content in here to help you guys. So if you ever come into the challenge template library and you see something thinking, oh my goodness, how did that get there? We put it there. So um, we're just trying to give you guys sort of a, a leg up on creating new content. Um, and on that note, I guess, for those of you who have multiple admins, if you wanted to create templates, you could even have template categories that were segmented based on admin name. So let's say, you know, say I'm an admin and I really like these 
discuss challenges and I want to save a template. So I save it as a template. But I want my other team members to know that I it was me who put it in there. So I can just put Heather and you know I'll also put it in as conversation. What are our options here? Put it in as product marketing. Okay. So then when someone else wants to see what I've been up to, oh, I have to put in the title. Just a challenge. Okay. So save that to right there. And someone wants to come in and say, oh, these are Heather's challenges. These are the ones she's made. Um, but a way to just sort of segment maybe different admins manage different groups of advocates, and so they have different challenges that they use. This is just another example of how you can keep those divided even at a sort of pre-planning organizational level. Okay. Another question. If we had a successful challenge, could the template be shared? Um, yeah, the answer is yes. If you felt that you were using a challenge that you had a lot of success with, you could absolutely reach out to us here um, on the support team or reach out to your advocacy coach. You can absolutely run that by us and say, hey, here's a template that we use all the time. We love it. We get really great results. Can you share this idea with your other advocates? For sure. Um, well, we could definitely look into putting that into all of the other challenge templates libraries. Another great idea for you guys, if you are interested in sharing popular challenges, is to use our uh, inclusive forums. So if you, um, if you go to support.inclusive.com, through there you can get into our forums. And there's a bunch of different discussions going on in there, but uh, we're going to open a discussion today where you can talk about challenge templates. And if you want to share challenge creation ideas back and forth, that might be a great idea to start swap success. So I have a question here that says, do you have any tips or tricks to organizing your challenges, mostly for different targets? Um, so that's from Lindsay. So yeah, Lindsay, I think for organizing your challenges in the template library, I would just tag them differently. So if you want to give your challenge template a tag that relates to one segment and then a different tag for another segment, that's how I would mark, break them down. I mean, you can give them multiple tags, so if different topics apply. Let's say you were, I mean, you could get really into segmentation, though. Let's say you wanted starter challenges for employees and starter challenges for partners. You could make those two different tags, um, and you could create it that way for sure, so that you would come in here and you would see starter, um, it would just be in the way that you name it. So you would have starter partner, starter employee, starter customer, stuff like that. Okay. If you have more questions about that, you can always uh, reach out to us here. We'll be happy to talk to you about that. Okay. Any other questions? I think I have one more here. Oh, I already answered that one about sharing successful challenges. Yeah, so one thing that I would really emphasize is that um, this is a good way for you guys to organize and categorize the type of success or just even to test out different ideas if you want to, you know, sometimes you're working and you think, oh, this is a great challenge idea. And maybe you don't quite want to put it in your hub yet. You could all save it as a template here. I mean, that's what this um, future challenge ideas. You could also make a category that was saved for later or a review later, something like that. Um, oh, one more question. How do you delete templates? Great idea, because now we're getting all clogged up here. See, I've got all these categories. I've made all these templates. Um, when all of the templates in a category have been deleted, that category should also disappear. So we're going to test that right now. So I have a Valentine's Day challenge. I have beta planning. I'm sick of feature challenge ideas. I want to get rid of this category. Okay. Let's delete this template. See. Done. And it's gone. Same thing here. I'm going to just delete the template. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes, I'm sure. Get it out of here. And it's gone. Now when I refresh my page, that category is okay. So one more thing we'll talk about is just editing the template. So I see here you can just edit your template. You come in here and you can change the category it's in. You can change the title, description, and you can just change the information in here. So 
let's say you have a challenge, you want it to all you want the template to be generic. So let's say I have you know, blog post regular, save as a template. For some of these, you're going to need to have content. So for example, in this post to Twitter chat, you need to have some sort there is required content. But aside from that, I mean you could just delete all that out of there. And then you could just come up here. And then if you wanted to delete all the personalized content, you could do that and then just save your template. Oh, it didn't like what I I didn't put that in there. Okay. And certainly you guys can be a little more detailed in your description um, than I'm being here. So you could even put in, you know, ideas that you had for how you wanted to use these templates, stuff like that. Okay. okay. One more question. Is there a way to see all the challenges that use a specific template? I don't think so. Although the challenges are also going to have a challenge type. So if you want to search by that challenge type, so let's say this is a social media challenge, so social media thing right there. Then I could come in here and if I search for um, social media challenges. Oh, I cannot search that. Of course, I want to filter. I want to filter by challenge type social media, then it would be right there. But um, no, there's not a way to search for a challenge based on using a specific template. But we can definitely add that in as a feature because that's a pretty good idea. So thank you for that. Okay. So I'm just going to go one more time quickly and show about how to edit your challenge template. So again, we're going to go to social media. I don't want to have lots of content in it. Discuss challenge. Okay, let's edit the discuss challenge. Edit. Okay. So maybe, well, this one just has lots of silly content in it. Okay. Let's pretend this was really related to the date. Then I could just take that out and put, you know, insert placeholder, insert content here. Okay. Call it, you know, you know blog. That's something that might apply every time, and then you'll know that you need to put content in both the blog post here. The actual blog link is going to be right here, and that's something. You can't really put a, I mean, you could put a placeholder here. If I didn't want to have this specific blog post, I could just put like google.com and that would work the same. And that's, I mean, this is a discuss challenge. I can't have discuss comment on Google, so it's not quite the same, but um, that works as well. Okay, that wraps up just about a half hour. Um, <coughs> that's all I really have to say for you guys about the challenge template library. Um, this is being recorded. So there's going to be a posting of this class on our discussions as well in our, in our knowledge base. So certainly if you want to revisit this or if you have more questions, you can follow up there. We'll have uh, posted some other relevant questions and um, the answers to the questions that you guys asked today. So don't think that just because class is over that the learning is over. Um, there's always more time for that. Okay, so I'm going to just wrap it up there. And thank you all for coming to class. That was awesome. And okay, well, thank you very much. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Um, the next class should be hopefully in two weeks. Um, and if you have ideas for things that you want us to talk about, certainly we'd love to hear them. Um, we want to make sure that the content we're providing is relevant to you guys. Okay, thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Please stand by.